guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here in my home base parking lot for a little truck review. And it's a truck that a lot of people are taking attention to. This is it. This is a 2023 Chevrolet Colorado. This particular one is the Z71. But before we get into this totally redesigned, all new midsize pickup truck from Chevy, let's talk about what's going on here. Mid-sized pickup truck, for a while it was becoming a little stale. A lot of the trucks were not getting redesigns, and even when Ford brought back the Ranger, it was already outdated because it was the Ranger that other parts of the world, like Australia, were already experiencing. Well, guess what? Chevrolet and General Motors kind of on a little bit of a roll here with bringing some new tech and new design to many of their vehicles have decided to do the magic to the Colorado. But in this midsize truck segment that was once stale, now it's on fire again because a lot of the brands are going full redesign. We got the new Tacoma, which is about to be unveiled in the next month or so. And of course, we already showed you the redesigned Frontier and we have the Canyon that's coming, which is the sister truck to this particular one. So what I wanna find out is, if you're a GM fan through and through, do you go Colorado or do you go Canyon? Let's go ahead, let's dive in our nitro yellow Z71 Colorado and find out. Right off the bat, the style. I'm so glad that they gave it a unique look different from the bigger Silverado. Really kind of gives it its own personality. Now up front on the Z71 equipped, you're gonna have your LED daytime running lamp, LED projector beam headlight, but the one thing that they kind of dropped the ball on is you have the old school Thomas Edison, there he is rocking on his rocket chair in there, light bulb for the turn signals. Now, as we work our way down, I do like the way they went very aggressive without looking too much like a transformer or a GoBot. What we have in the corners is a little bit of flat black, you have LED fog lamps. I wish they would have made this functional. So I am gonna have to give it half a zonk because half of it is nice LED fog lamp. The other half is fake vent. So that's a half a zonk on this area, but I do like the aggressive style that they did. And then as we come across the front, you're gonna notice that the grill is pretty high off the ground. That's because the Z71 has a, an inch lift over the standard Colorado because this is more of an off-road trim. Now you'll notice the blacked out bow tie, digging that, a little bit of gloss black, full functionality with the flat black, and of course we got the Z71 badge. Chevy does some of the best badges in the business. And then on the lower portion, you're gonna get this metallic gray painted lower front fascia, and if you look, all the way down we have our tow hooks bright red on both sides. This air dam is removable. So if you're freaking out and you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, how am I supposed to go off-roading with an air dam that's about six inches off the ground? This is removable. When you're driving around town, you can leave it here because it's gonna help with aerodynamics and getting a little bit better fuel economy. But you'll notice that you have your bright red tow hooks to pull those front tiers. And of course, uh, the Tacomas out of the mud, the dirt, the Rangers, just yank them right out. Now, what I think is one of my favorite parts about the style is how they have these functional areas on both sides to really give it that aggressive, unique look from Chevrolet. And if you're comparing this to the Colorado, excuse me, the Colorado to the Canyon, the GMC Canyon, I think the Canyon has a little bit more mature look to it. This is definitely more sporty and youthful, especially in nitro yellow. This color is not available on the Canyon. So you gotta have to ask yourself, do you like the traditional clean style of the GMC or you like this more aggressive style of the Colorado? Now, when we rise up, they did a bang up job on this hood. I love the way you have this deep canyon. See what I did there? Canyon in the center with the rises on both sides, much different, very different from the Silverado. And then I like the way it kind of angles down on each corner of the hood. Gives it a really nice, new, fresh, bold look. Now, when we come around the bend, what are we working with? Wheel and tire setup. So you're gonna get 
these standard wheels on your Z71. These are 18 inch gunmetal metallic gray machine aluminum. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, what kind of tires are wrapped around these things? You have those off-road Goodyear Wrangler Territory all-terrain tires, some nice shielding on the sidewall. And remember, if you're more of a street kind of person, truck person, you could get 20 inch wheels, which we've already shown you what the 20 inch wheels look like on our previous review. And if you haven't seen that one, I'll leave it at the end of this one. But definitely I'm digging the 18 inch wheel style with that off-road tire, that extra lift. Remember, it all starts with the WT trim, which is the work truck trim, and then you work your way up to the Z71. The only way to go up above this is gonna be ZR2, which stay tuned for that. Now, you'll notice the indentation on the fender gives it that nice, aggressive look. We have gloss black on the mirror caps. I wish they would have blacked out the Colorado badge. And it's a little bit high for me. I wish they would just lower it a little bit more on the door. But you'll notice all that great ground clearance. Of course, you got that nice four-door cab accessibility. And then working our way towards the rear, they did a great job on the bed. It's a five and a half foot bed. The way they did these angles really gives it some extra flavor so it's not just a boring slide slab kind of truck setup. You'll notice as we come to the rear, the Z71 badge nestled nicely right into that indentation. We do have our exhaust exiting on the passenger side. I wish they would have done a finished tip on the Z71 trim, but look what they did. Right from the Silverado, they have that nice space for you to put your shoes, your work bo boots, whatever you got, maybe some uh, diving flippers. You could put that there to get in to get your scuba gear. But just like with the turn singles, I hate to report that we do have the old Thomas Edison light bulbs on the back, so I am gonna have to zonk that. But the way that they did the rear tailgate how it actually bolds out rather than goes inward, gives it a nice look from the rear. You got great traction, watch this. Look, non-slip, all grip. Look at this, I'm testing it right now. That's all the grip you're gonna get on that bumper. And then coming down, you do have full tow capability with all of your hookups high out of the mud. Guess what, class leading, 7,700 pound towing capacity, and that's more than the Jeep Gladiator. So that's class leading for a mid-sized truck. Spare is mounted underneath, and then now it's time to do the business. Nice soft release. I like the way they give you a little bit of design with the mountains here on the back. And then guess what? You're wondering, well, Joe, why is this lifted up? This is that storage door. You have lockable storage. You open it up. You could put ice in here. You could then drain it out, make it a cooler, and then to lock it down, Real simple, and then guess what? If you're having a contest with whose is bigger, with your friends, whose tailgate is bigger, you could actually measure because we have a nice ruler on the back of the tailgate here. Great tow down points up front and in the rear. Four of them all the way around. Nice bed liner. You do have a manual sliding cab window, which I wish they would have power on the Z71. The other Zonk is up there. It's that remote control antenna, that RC car antenna. Wish they would just go shark fin. But the nice thing is, is we have a beautiful home power source right in the rear, power up whatever you need. And then of course, one final thing I want to show you is watch this. This is another trick that Chevy has up their sleeve. You could actually angle the bed on both sides. You lock that in just like I put there. And what that's gonna do is in case you have like maybe a canoe or a kayak, you could put it in the back and it's already angled up so you don't have to worry about it sliding out. It makes it easier to keep tied down in the bed of your truck. And then to remove it, that's all you do. One, two, three, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But why don't we go ahead we showed you the outside. Let's get underneath the hood because there's something new that's powering the Colorado. Let's go find out and see what it is. All right, guys, we got the hood popped open. You do have a prop rod, which I am going to zonk. Not because it's a prop rod, just because of where they placed it. Kind of silly to have it right in the center. But the big differentiator between this power plant and the Canyon is that with the Canyon, you have one choice. With the Colorado, depending on what trim you go with, there's actually different power level outputs. Now, if you were hoping for the Duramax to still be around, 
you're gonna be sad. And if you're hoping for a V6 to be around, you're gonna be even sadder. So both of those engines are gone from the lineup. So what do we have? We have a 2.7 liter turbocharged inline four, just like the Canyon. The difference is, is that if you go with the work truck trim, it starts at around 230 horsepower. This one has the high output setup. So you're looking at 310 horsepower, 430 pound-feet of torque. If you're buying a Canyon, all of them come that way. 310 on the horsepower, 430 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to an eight-speed automatic, zero to 60 in about six seconds. The truck Z71 trim weighs around 4,500 pounds. And like I said, class-leading towing, 7,700 pounds. Now the one sore subject when it comes to the engine is you actually have a little worse fuel economy than the V6. So you're looking at 17 in the city and 21 on the highway. But you know what? We here on Rady's Rides don't just focus on that MPG or even the horsepower number. What does it feel like? But before we get to that point, I wanna see what it looks like when this thing moves. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's fire it up and give it a go. Right, guys here we are in this redesigned 2023 Colorado it's been a long time I think the last like refresh was 2015 which seems like forever and a day ago I know you're saying to yourself well Joe I want a new truck I don't need a full size I don't need some humongous thing I have nothing to prove to anybody I feel very good with what I have both internally and externally when it comes to me I want a truck. I need a truck. I have jet skis. I like to go camping. I like to do lots of things because I'm very versatile. But how much is it? Very good question. If you're going Z71, which is probably one of the better ways to go when I show you around this interior, but if you're going Z71, starting price is right around $41,300. This particular one with the options, is right around an MSRP of $47,000. Let's see how it stacks up to the Canyon, to the door panels. Now what's interesting is no matter if you go Canyon or if you go with this Colorado, you're getting hard black plastic up top. So that's a big zonk. That should be soft touch so you can rest your arm up there. I do like the way there's no gloss black around the switch gear. You got some nice aluminum style trim with some gloss black right on the edge. And then you're gonna have almost like this wetsuit material for the door panel, the armrest, and then that other section where the red stitching is. Of course, Chevy Smart, they know you love Twinkies. You got a double Twinkie tray right in the center. And then down below, you'll be able to fit that ginormous Yeti can that you got for Christmas two years ago that you can't fit in your car. That's why you want a truck. Now going from the door panel to the dash, same story. That wetsuit material is gonna be easy to keep clean and it kind of looks cool and different. A little bit of silver, some gloss black, but the great news is there's gotta be something wrong with you if you're putting your fingerprints all over this because there's no reason to touch this. You slide on in, all new infotainment system. Instead of that dinky little eight inch that had like rubber buttons, now you have 11.3 inch. You got Google Maps as you can see. And then the great news is they still give you a volume knob. I like the way it doesn't rise too high close to the, uh, the hood line. So it's, it's totally out of sight. And then of course you got that full touchscreen capability. You could get into your AC controls. Look at the graphics. I mean, this is stuff that once upon a time you only saw on luxury cars and now you have it in this truck. Of course, we got our cameras. You can look out back. You got your trailering set up. You got all the different things that you could do. Even look down to where that tow hitch and the ball is going to be so you could hook up. The one zonk that I have is to turn on the fog lights, you got to go into the infotainment system. I know most people are going to leave the lights on auto. I get it. But if you want the fog lights, you got to go into the infotainment system. And that to me is, I don't know, it just feels a little weird. You could go into 
the screen and get all of the information on brake pad life, tire pressure, fluids and filters. Look at that. It's actually giving you nice bar graphs with the numbers. So that's a very nice touch. And then you come back here, you could easily adjust whatever you need to. And then you even have things like hill descent control. Let me throw it in the reverse. There's your backup camera with the trajectory, which is great. And then that's where, see how you could get it to where you, you look like a pro when you're hooking up your jet skis. So you don't look like some newbie or a clown that can't hook it up to the back. And then you just exit out. Working your way down, we got ventilated seats, heated seats, dual climate control. And look at the controls. They're no more little rubber buttons that look like something off a play school truck. This is like nice quality pieces with the red stitching. You got your AC vents blended in, and then I'm digging the toggle switches. One to put down all the windows. You got your auxiliary switch. If you wanna get a winch or some exterior lights, you can have it wired into that toggle switch, USB-A, USB-C, and the camo is wireless charging. This is gonna control your eight speed automatic. Red stitching, just like on the doors, you got your different modes which is great, and you got the ability to go into four high, two high, auto with your four by four system, and then back on the infotainment system side of things, there's your different modes. And I love the way they have, look at the pictures. It's like, too bad it's not nitro yellow because it would look just like your truck. But those are your, all your different modes that you have to make sure that you're able to get through just about anything. Of course, when you're getting through just about anything, you need your drinks, so you got your two cup holders. We got our Chevy key fob, spinning around, remote start. Nice high armrest, not the softest, but it is at a perfect height. And then you open it up, guess what? You got some places you could keep maybe some of your muscle men right here. And then you got enough room. First of all, you got a 12 volt. You got enough room for actually six Twinkies plus six Slinkies. See what I did there? Twinkies and the Slinkies. And remember, a Slinky is fun for a boy and a girl. So it doesn't matter whether you have boys or girls, Slinkies and Twinkies, they just work. Close it up, the seats, you're getting leather. Not pleather, not vinyl. These are leather seats, nice and soft. Love the way they got the perforated, the red. And then of course, working your way down, the Zonk is that it's manual controls for the passenger. On a Z71, $47,000 truck, those should be electric, but we do have a nice size sunroof. And I like the way they just kept everything black up top instead of some gray or God forbid, like a beige or a white. But why don't you come over to the business end? I wanna show you behind the new steering wheel in the new Colorado. All right guys, business time behind the wheel of this Twinkie bright yellow Colorado. Now the cool thing is you have two memory seat settings for the driver because unlike the passenger seat, we do have electric seat controls, even with that lower lumbar, very nice. I'm six feet tall and I love the extra space that you're getting in the new Colorado. But what I love even more, one thing I wanna show you extra is check out on the infotainment side of things. That is your off-road screen. So it actually has a G meter, steering angle. You can see what the transfer case is doing. Right now we're in two wheel drive, but check this out. That's in Baja mode. You hit terrain, it actually shows you pitch and roll and your tire pressure or overlanding, which you actually have a compass and then also elevation, which is kind of cool. Very nice features. And then to get the camera, it's very easy all by the press of a button. One thing that I would like to see on this infotainment system is a forward facing camera, especially on a Z71 trim. Now, the great news is where you get to place your hands, really fresh and new. I love the red stitching, very consistent with everything else. The leather, the blacked out bow tie, a little bit of silver trim, flat black on all the buttons, including a heated steering wheel. It is manual til tilting and telescoping. And then check out that new eight inch display. Super clear, all the important gauges. And I love the way that needle, the tack needle moves, changes colors, and you have that digital speedometer in the center. The one thing, if you were to ask me, Joe, what's missing? What else would you want to see? I think for $47,000, I would like to see a head-up display. But you do get those red lights that come up on the windshield when it's emergency brake time. 
and you're getting all the other safety features that Chevy is known for. But why don't we go ahead, let's get into the back seat and see if your passengers are gonna be happy that you went Colorado. All right guys, back seat time. And if you're wondering, Joe, why do you have the seat raised up? It's because I wanted to show you where there's some great storage underneath here. And it's perfect for, if your kids love playing with Legos, keep the Legos underneath here on a road trip because they're gonna get all over the floor and we all know what it feels like when you step on a Lego with a bare foot one of the worst pains in the world. Now, good news is, back to the seat, you have the leather all the way. You got these nice large pockets. Easily put, I would say, 10 churros from Costco. It's interesting because sometimes when I go to Costco, I feel like some people just go for lunch or for dinner, and they load up on the hot dogs and the pizza and the churros. You can keep some churros for later. It's one of those things where you don't wanna eat too much too fast, or you might puke all over yourself. Back of the command center, we do have two large cup holders. Some AC vents, not the largest, but they're here and I'm happy about that. USB-C, USB-A, and there's a home power source with a cover, so you don't have to show it if you don't want to. I did move the seat up, I'll be honest, but let's get real here because it's a mid-sized truck. If you're looking for more space, you need a full-size truck. It's sort of like with SUVs. Some people get all upset about the third row in a mid-size SUV is cramped, then you're gonna have to go full size. Same thing back here, it's decent. I'm not touching the headliner, but it is a little tight. Let's get honest here. But the good news is with the leather and everything, it actually feels pretty good. Plus, you do have a nice center armrest. That's double ply soft. Not triple ply, but double ply soft. Two cup holders and then a manual sliding glass window. Now, my advice, if somebody's complaining about how tight the back seat is, make them sit in the bed and then only talk to them through the window and don't even give them any food, not even some water to drink, just to punish them. But while we go ahead, let's go for a little spin and go on throttle in this new Colorado. All right, guys, we're in this 2023 Chevy Colorado Z71. It's interesting because with the way they've done the appointments inside the Z71 trim, it definitely has a sporty, but also a little bit of a luxury feel because of the leather interior. It's funny how when you do leather, it just gives you that little something extra. Getting to that 11.3 inch infotainment system, very easy. And then of course we got that clear digital gauge display. Visibility out the front is wonderful. And I just love seeing the beautiful shape of the hood. It really looks killer, but we're gonna go on throttle. Here we go, on throttle. That eight speed automatic. It's gonna take, I know, some time for people to get used to just having the one engine option and not being able to go Duramax, turbo diesel, or V6, but you can't argue with 430 pound-feet of tor torque, and you can't argue with class leading 7,700 pounds worth of towing capacity. We're gonna go ahead and see how this truck handles, even with the off-road tires. Now, when I did the other review in the Nitro Yellow Z71, that had the 20-inch wheels and more street-oriented tires. This is the 18-inch wheels with the off-road tires and still very, very impressed with how they've done the chassis work and the suspension work in this Colorado. Now, of course, there was more sidewall flex because we're with those off-road tires and it's a thicker side, it's a taller sidewall than the ones on the 20 inch wheels, but yet still very composed, great feedback to the wheel. And one thing I'm very happy that they did not do is give it a sport mode. Uh, I just feel like if you do it right in the truck, you don't need a sport mode. Normal is just fine. And since this is a truck, all the other modes make sense. The tow, the off-road, the Baja, all that kind of stuff. Now, if you want a true Baja mode, you gotta go ZR2. Or the equivalent from the Canyon would be the AT4X. But the good news is around town, even with those Goodyear Wranglers, you're not getting a bunch of road noise. 
So if you've always been fearful of going with the off-road tire because it's gonna make a lot of road noise and a lot of drone, it's not doing it in this Colorado, which is spectacular. But brakes feel great. I love you, the torque from the, the 2.7 liter. It takes a second for the boost to build, but once it's on, it is on. Watch this, we're gonna go on throttle again. On throttle, here we go. Love the dash. All that information. And I'm telling you, as you can see, you get up to speed very, very quickly. It's a good size truck as well. I, I like the dimensions, I like the proportions, and even the shape, I'm really, really digging. Seats are comfortable, supportive, and you can't argue the fact that they're ventilated and heated, which is also a very, very nice touch. But we're gonna get out onto the highway because unless you live on a dirt road or a trailhead, you're gonna have to get to those locations. And one of those things you're probably gonna have to drive on is the highway or do your daily commute back and forth to work in your Colorado. It's your work truck, but it's also your fun truck. Getting out onto the highway, obviously you got plenty of power to merge. It's just very smooth. The way that suspension isn't bouncy, it isn't floaty, it, it feels really well planted. And that is definitely something that I could commend Chevrolet about. And the wonderful thing is, is that if we're comparing this to the Canyon, so many of the attributes of this Colorado work into the Canyon as well. It, it comes down to, well, what kind of style do you like? Do you like the cleaner style of the Colorado, uh, of the Canyon? Or do you like the sportier, little bit more modern shape of the Colorado? And then of course, if you're going Canyon, you don't have to worry about power put out from the engine. You just, everybody's getting the 310 horsepower, no matter if you go elevation, AT4, AT4X, or Denali. But really a wonderful truck to drive on road and off road. And that's what makes it so versatile. And I think this is something that you're gonna really, really like over the last previous generation of the Colorado. But look at that, the handling is what just blows my mind. And the visibility, of course. All right, guys, we're gonna get back out onto the highway here. And like I said, uh, you're not gonna be hurting for power, I promise you. It, it, it may make you feel like you are, but think about it. This has the same amount of horsepower as the Frontier, which has a V6. It has more horsepower than the Tacoma when it has a V6. So things to think about. But we're going to get back to where it all started and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. Right, guys, it's been a bright kind of day not only because this florida sun's out but because this nitro yellow is just gleaming and beaming in that sunshine definitely want to thank the whole chevy team for getting us access to this colorado z71 let me know what you think are you liking the colorado more than the sister truck the canyon let me know down in that comment section but if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out hit that subscribe button i promise you it's worthwhile come back for more if you are a subscriber Thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. Of course, we need to give it up. The man behind the camera, he's trying to catch up on his sleep because he's been working hard and traveling hard. I know which way he would go. He's saying Canyon. That's what Steven says. So if you want to be like Steven, go buy a Canyon. Thank you, Steven, for all your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.